Good morning. Can you hear me? No, Can you hear me yet, Wade? <clears throat> yes, sir. We hear you fine, Mr. Marabella. This is Warden Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Well. The Committee on Parole is called to order. Today's date is April the 3rd, uh, 2023. The time is 837. Members of the panel today, sitting to my left are Mr. Alvin Roche, and to my right, uh, Ms. Uh, Cheryl Renatza. My name is Tony Marabell. I'll be acting as chair today. Uh, with the support staff located here at DOC headquarters in Baton Rouge, please introduce themselves. Thank you. Our remote location this morning is uh, David Wade, Correctional Center staff at David Wade. Please introduce themselves. Jerry Goodwin, Warden. Colonel Malcolm. Adam Rothman. Can you hear? Mm -hmm. That's everybody, Mr. Maribel. Thank you very much, Warden. Uh, would the offender uh, please introduce himself for the record and give us his uh, DOC number? Oscar Davis, 384 uh, Mr. Davis, let me explain our process to you. First, I'm going to read some information into the record. And then the board is going to conduct a parole interview with you. Uh, at the end of that interview, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement before the board votes. Do you understand our process? Yes, sir. This is the matter of Oscar T. Davis, DOC number 384177. Uh, Mr. Davis's date of birth is October, uh, is uh, August the 20th of 1976. He's classified as a sixth felony offender. He has a parole eligibility date of September the 21, 21st of 2023, and an adjusted good time date of December the 9th of 2023, a full term date of September the 22nd of 2032. He is currently serving a 12 year sentence on the charge of simple burglary. Uh, Mr. Davis, is that actual? Is those things correct? Yes, sir. Mr. Davis, your case was assigned to me, so I'll begin the interview process. Uh, would you give me your age, please? How old are you? Forty-six. And how long have you been in prison on these charges, uh, Mr. Davis? Uh, three years. All right. Uh, let me ask you, how, how long have you been in prison your whole stretch? From the time of your first arrest until today, give me a ballpark figure how many years you've spent in prison. About seven, eight years. How much? About seven, eight years. Seven or eight years? Yes, sir. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me about your educational background. How far did you go in school? 11th grade. Did you ever get your GED? No, sir. Have you tried to get your GED? No, sir. Why not? Oh, uh, I just ain't had time. Uh, well, you've been in prison for three years now. Uh, you didn't have time to try to, to work on your GED? Well, the facilities out there, they ain't have no, no school uh, until I got him. Okay, and how long you been at David Wade? About six months. Hey, have you tried to get in the GED program? No, sir. And why not? I don't know. Tell me a little bit about your work history. What kind of work do you do on the outside? Tree service. Say tree service. What 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 do you do? You cut down trees. What do you do? Oh, uh, cut down trees and uh, help pick up the limbs and stuff. And who did you work for? My brother. And how long did you work at that job? About seven eight months. Tell me a little bit about drugs and alcohol. You use drugs? No sir. You ever use drugs? No sir. How about alcohol? I drank a little bit. What, what's a little bit? Well, about a, about a 12 pack. 12 pack, how often? Every other day. A 12 pack every other day. How many DWIs have you had? Two. When you were come, when you came to court about, when you came to prison about three years ago, were you still drinking uh, two six packs every other day? Yes, sir. How long you been doing that for? 
uh, for a, quite a few years. You consider yourself to be an alcoholic? No, sir. Why not? I ain't no alcoholic, I don't guess. I'm sorry? I don't guess I'm alcoholic. Why don't you think you're an alcoholic? I don't, I don't think I'm there. You don't think you are? Why do you drink? Why do you drink so much? That's a lot of that's a lot of alcohol to drink. You know, a beer or two here and there is one thing, but a couple of six packs, that's that's a lot. Why do you drink? Calm a nerve down. I got nerve problems. All right. Well, there any other way of calming your nerves down besides drinking? No, sir. No, I know. Mr. Davis, you've been arrested over 30 times. We've got 10 felony convictions by my count, at least 12 misdemeanor convictions, and at least 10 other felony and misdemeanor arrests that were either dismissed or we can't find any records. So tell me why all the crime. Sir? Tell me why all the crime. You committed uh, disturbing the peace, possession. You had an attempted murder charge. You had an attempted armed robbery charge. You had possession of Schedule Two. You said you don't you you you, you don't uh, use drugs, but you had a drug charge. You have burglary charges. You had several DWIs, uh, stalking charges. Why why all of that crime? I don't know. Well, as you sit here today, what would you expect this board to do for you? I don't know, sir. Now, what, what are you, why are you here? Come up for parole. I understand. But, but how, I'm on this board and my job is to determine if I should let you out so you won't go back to doing all of this crime that you've committed. Tell me why I should take a chance on you. You don't think you're an alcoholic, but you drink 12 pack every other day. Uh, you don't know why you commit crime. Uh, so tell me why I should let you out. What makes you think, what makes me think you're not going to go back out and do the same thing you've been doing since 1989? I ain't going to make do the same thing. Why not? I learned my list. Tell them what's going to be different about this time than the last time. You're a sick defender. He wants to know what's going to be different this time than the last five times you got out. Uh, so that's what he's wanting to tell us. So tell him what. How you gonna stay out of jail? Oh, stay out of trouble and yeah. mind my own business and stop committing crime. How are you gonna stop committing crimes? Stay out to myself. Why did you commit the crimes to begin with? I'm I'm trying to figure that out. Were you drunk? Were you broke? Were you stealing to why were you why were you stealing things? I was broke. Well, you were work how much were you making as a uh, uh, a person doing tree service? About $200 a week. You have children? No, sir. How, how are you going to, what are you going to, how are you going to control your drinking when you get out? I ain't drinking no more. Well, why aren't you going to be drinking anymore? Cause it lead up to bad things. It had me doing bad things I should not be doing. So how are you going to stay sober when your nerves start acting up and, and when you start getting nervous and you start getting stressed? How are you going to make sure you don't drink it? I just ain't going to drink. I just, I just take, just take, go back taking my medicine I've been taking. What kind of medicine are you taking now? Oh, I can't think of the name, of it, but uh, it helped me out a whole lot. What's it for? Oh, I can't really tell too much. Tell you what it for? Uh, like, I know. You know, health issues or something like that. Yes, sir. Have you taking any substance abuse programs while you've been in prison? No, sir. You familiar with the uh, twelve-step program, AA meetings, NA meetings, things like that? No, sir. You've got a poor, a poor supervision history. Uh, you've got a very high risk, uh, especially substance abuse uh, issues. Uh, 
What programs have you taken that you think are important to you? You've taken uh, gauge your age, you've taken uh, risk management, and you've taken free release. So what, what have you learned from any of those programs? Can you give me just one good thing you picked up from any of those programs? Learn how to keep my self-esteem not getting anger so much. Do you think anger is part of your problem? Yes, sir, sometimes. You think the drinking and the anger contribute to some of this crime you committed? Yes, sir. You do well while you've been in prison. You, you don't have uh, any write-ups, which is great. Uh, looks like in a controlled environment, you do really well. Why, why is that? Why do you think it is that, that you do well when you're in prison, but when you get out, you mess up? I don't have the, I don't have the alcohol and be around it or bad influence and stuff. Well, I think we both agree on that, so thank you very much. Warden, what can you tell us about Mr. Davis? Uh, well, Oscar's been here, like you said, just a few months. Uh... Mr. Marabella, but he, he's maintained an excellent condo record. I, I'd like to point out his uh, work evaluation that Colonel Tyler has submitted on, uh, through the classification department. He's got an excellent work uh, history, he's very cooperative with staff. Uh, as far as his uh, mental health issues, uh, Mr. Marabella, he, is, he does have a diagnosis, uh, you know, an SMI diagnosis, and he has been being treated with medication, uh, you know, pretty much since he got to David Wade. And uh, I think that does have a, a, a positive impact on his behavior and his outlook, uh, his, his, his uh, mental health treatment that he's receiving along with the medication that he, uh, he takes and he's very, very uh, compliant with his meds. He's got a really good attitude, uh, does really, has done really well here. Uh, I know his record speaks for itself. He gets out in December if he doesn't make parole. So uh, it might be a good idea to let him uh, hang out with us a few more months, Mr. Marabella, and see if we can't get him some more programming and and uh, keep him going on the uh, straight and narrow with his medication regime at this point. I, I think that'd probably be the best, uh, best for uh, Oscar at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Warren. Appreciate your comments. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Davis, good morning. Mm. Mr. Davis, you say that you work for a police service owned by your brother for the last like, seven or eight months. You're 46 years old. What other employment have you had since you were 21 years old? I work at uh, Tyson Food over there in San Texas with, with the chicken plant. How long? About three years. Okay. Anything else? No, sir. Everybody. So I think along with the alcohol, you, you need to get some steady employment, work full time, and maybe you won't have as much time on your hands. Thank yes, you. Mr. Uh, Davis, is there anything you'd like to say to the board before we vote? No, sir. Thank you. Board Mr. Davis, uh, I appreciate your, your honesty. I think uh, you've been very honest with me. Uh, I think uh, you're on the right track. Uh, you do well while you're in prison. And I think it's because probably you're, 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 well, you're, you're appropriately medicated. Or you're taking the right medications uh, that you're doing. Uh, you've taken some good programs. Uh, I, I think you, you, you need to, to look a little more inwardly or think a little bit more about the drinking problem. Uh, you have a serious drinking problem. In, in my opinion, you are an alcoholic. And uh, you need to get a plan to make sure you're able to stay sober when you get out. Uh, I agree with the ward. You've done very well. You've got good reports uh, on, on your behavior while you've been in prison. Uh, and you're getting out. You're getting out very soon. You'll be out uh, by the end of this year or perhaps before. Uh, I think that there are a few other programs that you can take advantage of. I'd like to see you take things like uh, thinking for a change. You may be going in, or you're taking risk management. Maybe you could go into an AA 
NA type class where you learn the 12 steps to be able to, to, to know what to do when you get out. Uh, you, you're doing well. But my vote today is to deny you primarily because you're about to get out. And I think you'd benefit from a few more programs while you're there in prisons. I'm just one of three votes. So that would be my vote. Mr. Davis, I was really impressed with the things that Warden Goodwin had to say about you. Uh, I take those remarks. I, I do agree with the warden and Mr. Mirabella. I think you're in a good spot. I think you, my vote today is to deny the strong encourage to take advantage of whatever program opportunity uh, is available to you and, and get lined out of all your mental health meds. I would like to add a special condition to the good time of this certificate. That would be that uh, Mr. Davis be required to comply with his mental health treatment. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Uh, Mr. Davis, I agree with Warren Goodwin. Uh, I appreciate his positive remarks and your cooperation with the staff, but you have about nine more months. And if one good has a vocational program, maybe you can learn a skill so it will help you to find some better employment when you are released in December. So my vote is the same. Good luck. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, he's great. Uh, he's great. Okay, good. Huh? Okay, ladies, you did get out. Or us, Oscar. His name's not Al. Uh, oh, Mr. O'Shea is caught mid-sentence here. So what do you think? It's interesting how they went into the kind of like interview. And they, they do it differently because of the fact that he's getting out in like, what, nine months on good time. So they take a little bit of a different approach. First, he starts off by like not saying that he has any drinking problems. He admits to having uh, a twelve pack every other day, and Mr. O'Shea, um, I think because he has nine months to get out, or it's his tactic. He just he doesn't argue. He doesn't say like only nine months. Uh, I mean, only nine months. Only a twelve pack every other day. He just goes with it. He's just like. Well, a 12 pack at the end of the day is quite a much, uh, quite a lot. And they didn't really push that hard. And then uh, all of a sudden they start reading out his record and is, did I get it right? Uh, all the burglaries, seven DUIs, seven stocking. I mean, yeah, he's been locked up a long time. Maybe, you know, hopefully he has changed. And uh, this is just, you know, it's an old record. But there was like all the things that they kind of lined up. And it was like, whoa, I just didn't kind of expect that. Now, um, I really do like that they're going to get him into a work program. That I believe is the idea. I think that that's like to get... Like, that is so important before you get out. Like, you need to arm people with job skills. There are people hiring if you have a specialized skill. And, like, if there's anything I think that someone can get out of the system, it would not be having a GED. Uh, I've asked this question many times, how effective is a GED really? And I think that there are some places that maybe – just part of this, like, I don't know, would, would uh, if Walmart states that they hire former convicts, but then do they state it has to be a former convict with a GED? Like, I, I, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around the value of that. Or is it just to give the person who gets the GED some type of self-confidence? But does it really help you get a job? You're an you're an ex-convict out of prison. Did, are they really looking on your resume saying, hmm, we only want we only want people who've murdered just one person and uh, 
only a couple of assaults and batteries. And oh, this person checks the list. Oh, this is oh oh no, they doesn't have a GED. No. Next, let's see. Oh, three time murderer mm, out on bail after serving fifty years. Uh, GED. Let's go. I mean, like I was just saying, I don't, I don't really get it. Anyways, um, but if you have like a skill, like you're a forklift driver, you are a carpenter, you're an electrician, you're like these high value jobs. Anyways, um, he's getting out anyways. I also like that Ms. Renata added a stipulation because he is getting out at an early on a good time date. They are able to add that. Uh, anyways, I'll be rooting for him. And what are your thoughts? With that, I will let you go.